Look, sometimes Harry Potter just acts like a dummy. It's understandable. He didn't discover his wizarding gifts until the age of 11. Just be thankful he didn't turn into an obscurus. Instead, our favorite boy with a lightning scar got into all sorts of adventures. The trouble is the only person with any sense in his friend group was Hermione. Even the binger can't deny she's witty as can be. But all the smarts in the world can't save us from Harry's stupid decisions. Just watch. Some of these entries will have you wishing for an Obliviate straight to the face. When Ron is the voice of reason, you know you messed up. He told Harry with all his sincerity not to mess with sentient magical objects. Instead, Harry fully engages with a diary created by the world's darkest wizard. Honestly, name a single good wizard that transferred some of their soul into a journal. Go ahead, we'll wait. Sure, some might argue that Harry's only in his second year. A 12-year-old's awareness of magic isn't going to properly understand the risk. Something you wish to tell me? No, sir. It's easy to justify the decision, but that doesn't make this one great. Think about all the good that would have come out of him turning it in. The petrifications would have ended earlier and Hermione might have been spared. On top of that, Dumbledore might discover the truth about the Horcruxes a bit earlier. The only downside is more of his classmates might start rumors about him being a dark wizard. It's the only reason he kept it a secret, and we all know it. We're not buying the curiosity argument. He didn't turn it in because he'd seem guilty. Way to go, Harry. Nope, nope, we can't do it. The moment's just too real, and the emotions are palpable. It's not your fault, Harry, but it kind of is? It feels wrong to say that, but when you lay it out there, it's sort of right. Technically, Bellatrix is responsible for all the grief we feel talking about that scene. She cast the curse, and she targeted her own family. It's a big reason why she's one of the biggest villains in the series. It's essential to acknowledge Harry's decisions that led to the moment, though. In the books, Harry makes the right decision to message Snape and attempt to flu Powder to the Order's headquarters first. Neither one works, and that's where the mistake happens. Harry gives in to his fear. It's an obvious flaw, given his age, but it doesn't change the cold, hard facts. Sirius went to the Ministry of Magic to save Harry after he fell for an obvious trap. He should be here. If Harry resisted the ploy by Voldemort, Sirius would still be there. Also, our emotional health would be better, but oh well. Time for us all to scream out into the unreceptive void. Harry should have opened the egg sooner. It's the kind of dumb teenager crap that makes us want to pull our hair out. It doesn't seem that maddening in the movies, but the books will frustrate you more. Cedric tells Harry the big hint about how to hear the clue weeks before the task. Mull things over in the hot water. Harry's Gryffindor shows a bit too much and his pride gets in the way. The whole school likes Cedric, except his friends, so Harry decides not to use the help. He gets in his own head. All his feelings about Cho and Cedric clouds his judgment and forces him to pull an all-nighter. Thank goodness for Dobby, or Neville, if you only watch the movies. That beautiful little elf is a saint. The annoying part is the procrastination. We can do that because, well, we're not wizards, competing in a deadly tournament. When the chips are on the table like that, you can't put off help. Face it, Harry got a bit too caught up in his pride and almost failed the task. You're 12 years old, you got school in the morning, but your alarm clock fails to go off. Some elf messed with it to save you from danger. As a consequence, you miss the bus, and you're gonna be late for school. What do you do? Do you A, wait for an adult to help fix the situation, or do you B, steal your parents' car and try to drive there yourself? If you chose B, then congrats, you're Harry Potter and Ron Weasley. The decision to toss all care aside and drive to the school makes no sense. The fact that the car is still there means Mrs. Weasley is still around. Why not wait for her to help fix this mess? Instead, our heroes risk exposing the entire wizarding world and damaged school property. Nice. People will argue that Hogwarts' location is secret, and the only way to get there is by the train, but that's not accurate. You're trying to tell us Molly Weasley didn't know how to call Dumbledore and ask for assistance? It's an exciting scene, but a foolish decision. Only people in a rush and people without sense buy makeup without trying it out first. 
The same rule is true for first-time spell use. Stop, stop, stop. Especially when the creator calls it Sectum Sempra. It just sounds vicious and evil. Harry couldn't have known what the spell was going to do, but in that case, he didn't need to use it. He was acting recklessly. Which, sure, Draco Malfoy is a bit of a prick, but he didn't deserve an untested spell to the chest. You can see the regret in Harry's eyes the minute he uses that magic. Look at his face. He looks like a dog that just got into the trash. He would be in so much trouble if he weren't the chosen one. His defenders claim the choice makes sense, given the heat of battle. Draco starts the fight, and Harry was in the right to finish it. Still, there were more options for him to use. He had a shot on Draco regardless. He didn't need to choose an untested spell. He decided his makeup without testing it. And both situations leave you looking like a clown. Harry Potter, grabbing random magical objects since 1997. He really never stops to consider the consequences, does he? After all, this is the same kid who stuck his hand into an apparent cursed item. It's no shock to watch him grab his prophecy from the shelf like it's no big deal. It's the Philosopher's Stone all over again. Keep in mind, we're here in the Ministry of Magic because of an earlier poor decision, which, yes, Harry is full of them in the Order of the Phoenix. Hermione Granger, the clear voice of reason that sometimes gets ignored, warns Harry not to take the magical ball off the shelf. Harry, a wizard prone to ignoring good advice, takes the magical ball off the shelf. Look, everyone, it had his name on it. What was he gonna do? Not grab the thing with his name on it? He's just too curious to resist that kind of thing. Of course, the minute he touches it, the Death Eaters show up. He falls for two traps in a row. <sighs> Honestly, Harry, how did you make it this far? For those unaware, Voldemort uses a taboo charm on his name. The charm associates an effect with a name or phrase. In this case, it's you-know-who's name. The only people brave enough to say it are members of the Resistance. The Dark Lord uses the charm as a tracker. Voldemort. It reveals their location to him and his army. Ron tells Harry not to say the name. The book makes that abundantly clear. And the movie planned on making that distinct as well. The trouble comes in Harry's pride and determination. He accidentally says the name Voldemort in the heat of the moment. It's at that exact point the Snatchers show up and take the three of them to Malfoy Manor. Honestly, you can't make up this level of daftness. We usually get a cautious and reserved Harry, but the moments he's not stand out more because of it. Dobby didn't need to go save them if they managed to avoid the taboo. Just keep that in the back of your mind next time you want to get mad at Harry. It's not easy for Harry to meet new people and make friends. He's shown to shell himself in often, and it takes effort to earn his trust. Hermione and Ron are the only two people Harry tells everything within his age group. That dynamic proves to be a wrong decision in one big moment. For a brief period, Harry and Cho become boyfriend and girlfriend. It's Harry's first real relationship, and given the circumstances, he handles it well enough. We'd be remiss if we didn't bring up the cringiest of cringe moments from their time together, though. Yes, we're talking about that date. Harry takes Cho to Madame Puddifoot's right around Valentine's Day. The place is crowded with happy couples having a great time. However, Harry and Cho aren't one of those couples. Cho wants to talk about Cedric, someone who is close with both her and Harry. However, the Chosen One only talks about that night with his trusted advisors. Cho is cut off, and Harry shows he can't open up fully. It couldn't hurt Harry. She was grieving too, and she needed a form of closure that you could have provided. Wizards and goblins were in a strained relationship during Harry's pursuit of the Horcruxes. The two have a history of mistrust, so any deal between the two groups would be on shaky ground. All that context is essential when considering Harry's interaction with Griphook, the Gringotts goblin they saved from the manor. The goblin wants a valuable prize for his efforts to help. After all, breaking into the vault of Bellatrix Lestrange is dangerous and comes with a high risk. To balance that out, Griphook requests the Sword of Gryffindor in exchange. Yes, the same sword the team needs to destroy the Horcruxes. Harry does his best to scam the goblin. He tells him he can have the sword once he's helped them. Harry and company think they're being smart by not giving the exact time they need to give up the sword. Instead, the goblin sees right through a blatant wizard lie. He crosses them before they can do the same. The end result is a mess of a heist, built off the back of a transparent and needless lie. 
Imagine for a moment that Harry was not the boy who lived. Would he have gotten special treatment during the second task in the Triwizard Tournament? We think not, and some of you may agree. Regardless, he got away with a mistake, but that doesn't mean we can't point it out. By now, we all know Harry isn't perfect. That same song Harry took forever to listen to affected his performance in the race. His use of Gillyweed allowed him to make it to the rescue point faster than anyone. Once he's there, he manages to save Ron with relative ease. There's a problem, though. He can only take one. He fears the worst and thinks the merpeople will eat Floor's sister if he doesn't act. Really, Harry? Did he actually think the Wizarding World would be okay with that happening? Even Ron and Hermione call him out on that after the fact. He almost lost everything by taking that too seriously. The schools would never risk harm on any wizard not chosen to compete. It's not even plausible. Did this list leave you frustrated with Harry Potter? Check out our other Harry Potter videos for more inspiring magical moments in the series. Comment below with some of your favorite terrible decisions in the series. Plus, you can support The Binger by liking this video and subscribing for more content.